Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Today is All Hallows' Eve, also called Halloween, the 31st of October as I record this and maybe as you're viewing it, depending on when you see it. Well, this day is also known by many Protestants as Reformation Day. So this is the anniversary of Martin Luther's initial activity sort of against Catholicism is the is the narrative. Um, in reality, um, even Protestant pastors that are at least historically aware, like um, Pastor James White, who is extremely anti-Catholic, but he has the sense to demythologize what happened on October the 31st, 1917. Uh, Martin Luther, as, as abhorrent as he was, as devious as he was, as demonically or likely demonically possessed as he was, we're going to go over that, um, he himself did not do some sort of major rallying protest or something like that on the 31st. Basically, it was him posting a thesis of some sorts on something that acted kind of like a bulletin board where things were posted. We didn't have social media back then. We didn't have forums and whatever. It was just that was kind of how you got out ideas. And um, he was really at that point a Catholic priest who was, uh, although a heretic, was was sort of getting the ball rolling with sort of conversations that, obviously, of course, he ended up being a massive heretic, but you see what I'm saying. Uh, it wasn't this mythological event that people have, have, have painted it as. Nonetheless, this is the day that Protestants like to celebrate Reformation Day, which is ironic because most Protestants or the devout Protestants will not celebrate Halloween, but they'll celebrate Martin Luther. Anyway, that's interesting. But um, so there's an article called Luther Exposing the Myth, and this is on a website called catholicapologetics.info. For my money is the Beth, best Beth? best one-stop shop for Catholic apologetics from a priest especially. Um, I've gone there many times. In any case, we're going to talk about the darker side of Martin Luther. He really was an insane person in many ways, a complete and absolute blasphemous heretic. There are many things about his personal life that we're not really going to go into much today um, because that's another conversation that takes different justifications that are not in this article, so I'm not going to go there without evidence, if that makes sense. Um, but also, I want to say before we continue, Protestants today are a massively mixed bag. Many of them are not Lutherans. Not all Protestants have been Lutherans. There are many problems with Calvinism in, in, in similar ways. Um, nonetheless, we're just looking at this today because if you're celebrating the Reformation, that's a really bad thing to be celebrating. And Martin Luther was a complete devil, basically. Um, also, if you are a Protestant of goodwill, this is not an attack on you. In fact, I would imagine that most Protestants aren't aware of any of these things, because why would they be? We're 500 years removed. Nobody even knows what they're protesting anymore. It's usually just sort of some more, I don't know, I hate using the word extremist, but let's use that in a loose term, more kind of extreme Protestant polemicists that tend to trumpet the anti-Catholic nonsense. Whereas most Protestants today basically just believe that as long as you're cool with Jesus, you're going to heaven. So I don't even think they really have problems with Catholics in a, in a lot of cases. But anyway, so here we go. So this is um, the article called Luther Exposing the Myth. This is an image of him. It was when he was near his death, but he wasn't the uh, heroic, muscular superhero some people portray him as. Okay, so we're going to go through his various comments on things. We're not going to go through absolutely every one because that's a lot. Um, but if you do want to look up this article, just look up the title, Luther Exposing the Myth, and it's at a website called catholicapologetics.info, which you can probably see there in the domain name uh, on the video here. And um, also, just before we continue, you can see when you click the citations, they are cited, and um, you can tell this priest, who is a traditional priest, has done very well to cite a lot of different works, many of them in different languages. Um, this priest is also capable of reading things like Latin, so there's there's ways of going to more ancient things as well. Um, it's all cited. It's all there. It's not just, you know, I cite some somebody's blog or something. This is very, very well done. I'm sure someone could take issue because people can take issue with lots of things, but nonetheless, these are cited very well. So here we go. Ten Commandments. Christ taught, if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. Luther, in speaking of the commandments, states or teaches. Their only purpose is to show man his impotence to do good and teach him to despair of himself. So man is incapable of good. Thou shalt not covet is a commandment which proves us to all be sinners, since it is not in man's power not to covet. 
which you, so you can't not covet if you're a person, according to Luther. And the same is the drift of all the commandments, for they are all equally impossible to us. So the commandments are impossible. They're just ideals. Moses is an executioner, a cruel lictor, a torturer, a torturer who tears our flesh with his pincers and makes us suffer martyrdom. So Moses causes us to be martyrs by killing us with pincers. Whoever in the name of Christ terrifies and troubles consciences is not the messenger of Christ, but of the devil. Let us therefore send Moses packing and forever. So if you believe that you shouldn't do bad things and you tell somebody that and it troubles their conscience, you are of the devil, according to Martin Luther. He says, we must remove the Decalogue out of sight and heart. It does not matter what people do. It only matters what people believe. Okay. If we allow them, the Ten Commandments, any influence over our conscience, they become the cloak of all evil, heresies and blasphemies. So Ten Commandments are blasphemies. Okay, free will. Christ taught, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. So we don't believe we're saved by our works in the per se. We're not saying we get to heaven by doing things. But we do know that faith without works is not real faith. It's dead. So we have to do works. Luther teaches us, With regard to God, and in all that bears on salvation or damnation, man has no free will, but is a captive, prisoner, and bond slave, either to the will of God or to the will of Satan. So you're either, you have no free will, and either God's guiding you or Satan's guiding you. So really nothing is your fault. We do everything out of necessity, nothing by free will, for the power of free will is nil. So this is basically the basis for evolutionary theory. You're the product of your environment. So think about that. Man is like a horse. Does God leap into the saddle? The horse is obedient and accommodates itself to every movement of the rider and goes whither he wills it. Does God throw down the reins? Then Satan leaps upon the back of the animal, which bends, goes, and submits to the spurs and caprices of its new rider. Therefore, necessity, not free will, is the controlling principle of our conduct. God is the author of what is evil as well as what is good. And as he bestows happiness on those who merit it not, so does he damn others who deserve not their fate. So God sends people who don't deserve to go to hell to hell. God sends people who don't deserve to go to heaven to heaven. God decides to be the rider of the horse, or he gets off and says, Satan, you have at it. So you are either the plaything of God who will send you to hell even if you're good, or you are the plaything of the devil, which God says you can have because God is not just, apparently. This is the logic of Lutheranism. It's insane. On reason, Christ taught, be therefore wise as serpents and simple as doves. You know then how to discern the face of the sky, and can you not know the signs of the times? Luther teaches, no good work happens as a result of one's own wisdom, but everything must happen in a stupor. Reason must be left behind, for it is the enemy of, of faith. So no one does anything good by deciding to do it. Okay. Reason is the devil's handmaid and does nothing but blaspheme and, and dishonor all that God says or does. So if you think with logic, you blaspheme. Reason is directly opposed to faith, and one ought to let it be. In believers, it should be killed and buried. Okay. One should learn philosophy only as one learns witchcraft, that is to destroy it, as one finds out about errors in order to refute them. So philosophy as such is witchcraft. Get rid of philosophy because it makes you a witch. On sin. Christ, now I should say, people are going to say, oh, Kennedy, you're not being fair. He didn't say it makes you a witch. He just said it's like witchcraft. Oh, I'm sorry. That makes it so much better. Thank you, Luther. Yes, philosophy is like witchcraft. I was wrong. On sin. Christ taught. <clears throat> He that commits sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God appeared that he might destroy the works of the devil. It's from the Bible. Luther teaches, A person that is baptized cannot, though he would, lose his salvation by any sins, however grievous, unless he refuses to believe. For no sins condemn him but unbelief alone. So the log logic of that is if you are a true believer... You'll believe and you go to heaven, but you can do bad things. If you're a good person but don't believe, you go to hell. Now I believe that. You have to believe and you have to be a Christian and be baptized and stuff. It's not it's not as simple as, as, as just being good. However, the logic of this is that as long as you believe, you can do whatever you want. Now, people will retort and say, well, hold on, a true believer wouldn't do that. 
Well, then that gets back to the idea that we have no free will and it's either God or Satan on our back and we're the horse. So nonetheless, whatever direction you go and it's untenable. Next, he says, be a sinner and let your sins be strong, but let your trust in Christ be stronger and rejoice in Christ, who is the victor over sin, death in the world. We will commit sins while we are here, for this life is not a place where justice resides. No sin can separate us from him, even if we were to kill or commit adultery thousands of times each day. That's impossible. Every sin separates us from God if it's a mortal sin. This is the teaching of the church for 20 centuries. Um, But of course, that doesn't mean we lose our faith in the sense of belief. That's what um, the Council of Trent was made very clear. Um, But every time we commit a mortal sin, we do make ourselves enemies of God because the Holy Trinity does not dwell in our soul. That's what the church has always taught. Um, And it doesn't make any sense that he says no sin can separate us because I would assume that Martin Luther would believe that not believing is sinful. Like apostasy, apostasy is a type of sin. So there is a sin, at least even in his theology, if you can call it that, that would get rid of salvation. Do not ask anything of your conscience, and if it speaks, do not listen to it. Okay. If it insists, stifle it. Amuse yourself. If necessary, commit some good big sin in order to drive it away. Conscience is the voice of Satan. Oh, my goodness. And it is necessary always to do the contrary of what Satan wishes. So conscience is the voice of Satan. So you do, if you do sins, you are beating Satan. Ha ha, gotcha, Satan. You thought you were going to damn me by getting me to commit adultery, but that's just my conscience. So I'm going to commit adultery and I beat Satan. Lawyered, Martin Luther style. Okay, this is ridiculous. Okay, faith and good works. Christ taught, let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Christ taught, in the words of St. James. What shall it profit, my brethren, if he has faith, but has not works? Shall faith be able to save him? So faith also, if it is not, if it have not works, is dead in itself. So faith without works is dead. Luther teaches, For we account a man to be justified by faith alone, without the works of the law. Okay. Um, it is more important to guard against good works than against sin. So don't do good things. That's It's worse to do good things than it is to sin. So believe in Jesus, watch as much porn as you want. I'm obviously not recommending this. I'm being in, the, in third person here or, or pretending to be Luther. Commit adultery, do a bunch of drugs, murder some people if you need to. I mean, come on, you know, just as long as you don't do good works, that's worse. Well, good works are bad and are like sin, are sin like the rest. So doing good, <laughs> this is so crazy. So Luther believes that sin is sin because he's talking about it. But he believes that doing good things is the same as doing bad things. So all things are bad things or all things are good things. I guess it depends on which Luther you get. There is no scandal greater, more dangerous, more venomous than a good outward life. My goodness. Manifested by good works and a pious mode of life. That is the grand portal, the highway that leads to damnation. So do not be holy. Do not be charitable. Don't be good. Or you go to hell. Okay. He that says the gospel requires works for salvation, I say flat and plain, is a liar. Okay. Social justice. I don't like that term, social justice, the way it's used, but I know what it's saying. Christ taught, blessed are they that hunger and thirst after justice, for they shall have their fill. <laughs> Luther. Peasants are no better than straw. They will not hear the word, and they are without sense. Therefore, they must be compelled to hear the crack of the whip and the whiz of bullets, and it is only what they deserve. He's probably talking about peasants who wouldn't convert to Lutheranism. Because they're probably Catholics, because they were smarter than Luther. To kill a peasant is not murder. It is helping to extinguish the conflagration. Let there be no half measures. Crush them. Cut their throats. Transfix them. Leave no stone unturned. To kill a peasant is to destroy a mad dog. If they say that I am very hard and merciless, mercy be damned. Let whoever can, <coughs> can stab, strangle, and kill them like mad dogs. Okay. I, Martin Luther have during the rebellion slain all the peasants, for it was I who ordered them to be struck dead. All their blood is upon my head. But I put it all on our Lord God, for he commanded me to speak thus. So God told Martin Luther to have all the peasants killed during the peasant revolt that took place around his, in, in, around his time. Okay. God has given the law and nobody observes it. That's not true. They're called saints. He has, in addition, instituted rodmasters, drivers and urgers, 
So then our rulers to drive, beat, choke, hang, burn, behead, and break upon the well of the vulgar masses. So down with the lower class. Like the drivers of donkeys, who have to belabor and donkeys incessantly with rods and whips, uh, or they will not obey, so must the ruler do with the people. They must drive, beat, throttle, hang, burn, behead. That, oh, it's the same thing. Okay. He already said that, except he did, said it a different way. So as to make themselves feared and to keep the people in check. Wear the mask. Martin Luther said so, because God told Martin Luther. Wherever the princes take their power from, it does not regard us. It is the will of God, irrespective whether they have stolen their power or assumed it by robbery. So as long as somebody is in power, even if he's there immorally, he's a legitimate ruler, because there is no such thing as being an immoral ruler because God put him there, because God does immoral things, according to Martin Luther. The Jews. Christ taught, you shall love your neighbors yourself. Luther teaches, myself, my advice, as I said earlier, is first that their synagogues be burned down and that all who are able to toss sulfur and pitch, it would be good if someone could also throw in some hellfire. Second, that all their books, their prayer books, their Talmudic writings, also their entire Bible, be taken from them, not leaving them one leaf, and that these be preserved for those who may be converted. Third, that they be forbidden uh, on pain of death to praise God, to give thanks, to pray, and to teach publicly among us and in our own country. Fourth, that they be forbidden to utter the name of God within our hearing, for we cannot with good conscience listen to this or tolerate that. He who hears this name, God, from a Jew must inform the authorities or else throw so, throw so dung at him when he sees him and chase him away. So we'll just continue. Burn their synagogues, forbid them all, forbid them all that I have mentioned above. Force them to work and treat them with every kind of severity, Moses did in the desert and slew 3,000. If that is no use, we must drive them away like mad dogs in order that they may be partakers of their abominable blasphemy and of all their vices, and in order that we may deserve the anger of God and be damned with them. That we may not, excuse me. I have done my duty. Let everyone see how he does. I am excused. I'm excused. Martin Luther's excused because he did his best. Uh, if I had to baptize a Jew, I would take him to the bridge of Elbe, hang a stone around his neck, and push him over with the words, I baptize thee in the name of Abraham. Well, there you go. The Jews deserve to be hanged on gallows seven times higher than ordinary thieves. Okay, so let's just break this down. Obviously, we believe that false religions as Catholics, well, we're supposed to believe this. As, as Catholics, we do believe that false religions can be in some way suppressed, and anyone can believe this. I mean, you could be a libertarian, but you would at least still believe that, like, uh, for the sake of, you know, protection of in innocent peoples, you could stop, like, an Aztec human sacrifice that was done in the name of religion, right? Like, everyone believes that there can be some, no matter how liberal you are, everyone believes that there can be some restraint on something to do with religion. No one actually believes in true religious freedom because you can say anything is religious freedom. You can say, it's again, it's my religion to sacrifice human beings. Or you'd say, well... I'm not stopping your religion. I'm just saying you can't murder. And they say, well, it's, you know, my religious freedom. And they say, well, of course, there are limits to that because we don't murder in this society, right? So everyone believes there can be some sort of limit. So we do believe as Catholics that you can halt uh, false religions. And we don't believe it just for those senses I just said. We also believe you can stop error because error is, is, is unrighteous. Error has no rights. That which is a lie cannot be promulgated as if it's true. That's just unjust. You know, you wouldn't allow somebody who was your, <coughs> excuse me, you know, it's interesting to see a lot of these parents, they go into these schools and they say, um, you know, basically, you'd stop teaching my kids critical race theory. And you say, well, why? And they say, because it's not true and it's a lie. Well, I agree with you, but if religion is a false religion, then you can also say that teachers or schools or whatever should not have the right to teach that to the kids. So you can suppress false religions. If I was a Catholic monarch, I would suppress the spreading of Judaism as I would suppress the spreading of Islam, as I would suppress the spreading of, of Protestantism, etc. But what Martin Luther does is obviously insane because he's going a step further and saying, kill them all, hang them off bridges, whatever. This man was clearly insane. This man was clearly a nut job. Continuing. Marriage and women. Okay, Christ taught, for this reason shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife and they shall be one flesh. Therefore, now that they are not two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined, let no man put asunder. Moses, by reason of the hardness of your heart, permitted you to put away your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. And I say to you, 
that whoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, commits adultery, and that he shall marry her that is put away, commits adultery. He who marries her, excuse me. Luther teaches, if the husband is willing, or sorry, if the husband is unwilling, there is another who is. If the wife is unwilling, let the maid come. Okay. So one of them wants to shag up with somebody else, shack up with somebody else, go for it. Suppose I should counsel the wife of an impotent man with his consent to give her herself to give herself to another, say her husband's brother, but to keep this marriage secret and to ascribe the children to the so-called putative father. The question is, is such a woman in a saved state? I answer certainly. So if a man has problems with his pelvis, uh, the woman can shack up with his brother. They can have kids. They can tell the kids that their dad is the impotent one. And we're good to go. Okay. That's interesting. Uh, it is not in opposition to the Holy Scriptures for a man to have several wives. Yes, it is. Uh, know that marriage is an outward material thing like any other secular business. The body has nothing to do with it. In this respect, one can never sin against God, but only against one's neighbor. Okay. As to divorce, it is still a debatable question whether it is allowable. For my part, I prefer bigamy to it. Okay. Um, the work, the word and work of God is quite clear that women are to be made either wives or prostitutes. What is this guy saying? Okay. In spite of all the good I say of married life, I will not grant so much to nature as to admit that there is no sin in it. No conjugal due is ever rendered without sin. The matrimonial duty is never performed without sin. So every time a man is with his wife, he commits a sin. Well, that's insane. Virtue and vice. On lying. Christ taught, you are of your father the devil, and the desires of your father you will do. He was a murderer uh, from the beginning, and he stood not in the truth because truth is not in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own, for he is a liar and the father thereof. Luther teaches, what harm could it do a man do if a man told a good lusty lie in a worthy cause for the sake of the Christian churches? That's Takia in Islam, by the way. To lie in a case of necessity or for convenience or an, ex or an excuse, such lying would not be against God. He was ready to take such lies on himself. So because Christ came to save sinners, do as much sin as you want. That's the logic of that. Okay. On God, Christ taught, you shall love the Lord your God with your whole heart and your whole soul and with your whole life, whole mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. Luther taught, I look upon God no better than a scoundrel. My goodness gracious. I hate even saying these things. On drunkenness, <clears throat> Christ taught in the words of St. Paul, Know you not that the unjust shall not possess, possess the kingdom of heaven? Do not err, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor the effeminate, nor liars with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards. Luther teaches, We eat and drink to kill ourselves. We eat and drink up to our last farthing. Drink up to our last farthing. Okay. On pride, Christ taught, and whoever shall exalt himself shall be humbled. Luther taught, St. Augustine or St. Ambrose cannot be compared with me. Uh, what I teach and write remains true, even though the whole world should fall to pieces over it. So the whole world's destroyed by Martin Luther's words. He's still right. I'm right, dang it. My way, my way or the highway. I'm Martin Luther. Look at me. I'm awesome. On the person of Christ, Christ taught, which of you shall convince me of sin? If I say the truth to you, why do you not believe me? He that is of God hears the words of God. Therefore, you hear them not, because you are not of God. Luther taught, Christ committed adultery. That's insane. First of all, with the women at the well, about whom St. John tells us, was not everybody about him saying whatever he has been doing with her, secondly, with Mary Magdalene, and thirdly, with the women taken in adultery, whom he dismissed so lightly. Thus, even Christ who was so righteous, must have been guilty of fornication before he died. That is absurd. That is a heretical, terrible blasphemy. And Martin Luther should have been slapped for that. Or worse. I have greater confidence in my wife and my pupils than I have in Christ. Okay? It does not matter how Christ behaved. What he taught is all that matters. Okay. Sacred Scripture. Now, how much is left in this? Well, not much. Okay. Last thing. Sacred Scripture. Christ taught. For I testify to everyone that hears the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add to these things, God shall add unto him the plagues written in this book. 
And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from these things that are written in this book. I believe that is from the book of Apocalypse, book of Revelation. Am I right? I am right, ha. Huh? See, I paid attention when I was narrating Taylor Marshall's book on the Apocalypse. Luther teaches, To my mind, it, the book of the Apocalypse, bears upon it no marks of apostolic or prophetic character. Everyone may. So let's, okay. So the book of Apocalypse says, take away books of the Bible and you're going to hell. Luther says, that book's not even part of the Bible. Ha <laughs> ha, I win again. He continues, everyone may form his own judgment of this book. As for myself, I feel an aversion to it. And to me, this is sufficient reason for rejecting it. So I don't like it, so I get rid of it. I'm Martin Luther. I'm God, and you're not. If your papist annoys you with the word alone, Roman 3, chapter 28, tell him straight away, Dr. Martin Luther will have it so. Papist and ass are one and the same thing. He means donkey, by the way. Whoever will not have my translation, let him go, let him give it the go by. The devil thanks, the devil's thanks to him. What does that mean? The devil's thanks to him who censors it without my will and knowledge. Okay. Luther will have it so. And he is a doctor above all the doctors in popedom. So Luther is the smartest man in the world. Everyone else is a meanie poo head who sucks at Catholicism and isn't good. Very good. Luther had a perverse habit of freely falsifying scripture for justi- to justify his purposes. Yeah. He says, the history of Jonah is so monstrous that it is absolutely incredible. So there is no Jonah jumping into the water. There is no whale. There is no destruction of Nineveh. Luther did not believe in that. He sounds like a modern liberal Catholic. Uh, The book of Esther I toss into the Elbe, the river. I am such an enemy to the book of Esther that I wish it did not exist, for it Judaizes too much and has in it a great deal of heathenish foolishness. This is the man who thinks you can you know, have a bunch of horrors and still be a good man. He thinks that there's too much heathenish, heathish, heathenishness. Of very little worth is the book of Baruch. Whoever worthy, however, however the worthy, or sorry, whoever the worthy Baruch might be. The epistle of St. James is an epistle full of straw because it contains nothing evangelical. Okay. All right. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. This is called, uh, was it Luther Exposed? I think so. This is the book or the article. Yeah, Luther Exposing the Myth. Check it out if you want to read it for yourself. But I read basically the whole thing, so there you go. Again, if you're Protestant, uh, this is shocking to you. Don't shoot the messenger. It's not an indictment on you if you don't know these things. You can't be indicted for things you don't know unless you are trying to defend Donald Trump. Um Anyway, so as always, let me know what you think in the comments. This has been the Kennedy Report. Until next time, God bless.